So basically, we want to speak about things that uh, makes me mad. Uh, those things, um, basically, all of us do them. And during this presentation, we will just see a few examples and, um, those, of those horrible solutions. And we will try to figure out how to avoid them. Uh, yeah, basically, to cure them and have fun. I would like to hear something from you guys. And if you have some comments, some questions, uh, anything, just uh, give it a shout. I will throw some uh, gifts into you, if it's fine. Uh, just make sure you will catch them. So um, this presentation is about just my personal experience. It's not about. Um, that I know everything and, every, and, and the rest of the people on this planet don't know anything. Um, this is my just, just my personal experience. Um, this is in order to prevent those mistakes uh, in your personal experience and save you from being hated because I really do hate those people uh, who wrote the examples we will uh, look through in a minute. In a minute. Uh, first of all, there's the absence of refactoring. It uh, happens sometimes when um, you ask to create some business role, and then business go to you and ask to change it, and then go again, and then again. And uh, this simple uh, example, uh, can anyone tell me when we're going to go into this, when, well, when value is true, right? And I don't know how many seconds do you need, but can you please calculate how, uh, which value should be to go into this one? Anyone? There's only two options, it's true or false. And is it false, correct. Catch this. I don't know what's that. This is just the first gift. It's from data art anyways. <laughs> so yeah, uh, basically, this is an example of horrible refactoring. And uh, how the developer actually came up with that? And uh, I think that basically they just created a normal statement. And then they decided that we need to negate it uh, because uh, business people just ask them. And they decided to bring it back. But instead of refactoring that, they decided to negate it once again, and then once again. And then we come up with something really ridiculous. So how to fix that? This, uh, this is a really easy example. So basically, just um, do not use uh, double negations. I'm sorry. Um, this is a weird order of slides for some reason. So. How do you guys think if um, this statement is correct at all? So will it work in this situation? Will we go into this statement? The answer is yes. But what about this? Will we go into this statement? Will it be true? It will be. But what about this? In this case, we won't go into the statement because values aren't normalized. And if you uh, end up with necessity of normalizing Boolean values in your code, then that means you do something horribly wrong. Just never use uh, direct comparison of Boolean values. So important things to rem remember here, never compare Boolean values. Only use logical operators instead. And just if you don't remember all of them, just go to the wiki every time you need to uh, write a statement and you're going to be fine. Uh, do not use more than one negation. You always will be fine with a single one. It's just a matter of simplification. So the second example is um, over-designed uh, structures. Uh, for example, when you call a method from the method from the method in order to get some constant, for example. Here's the example of uh, really, really good um, structured code which uh, only have public methods uh, for calculating, calculating the height and then we call our uh, internal method then we call our private method and in that private method we 
uh, call our calculated val variable, and then we return the constant. I'm sorry for Swift examples. I guess it's understandable for everyone. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. So basically, what we do here is we just do next. I mean, we, we do the, the following. So why not simplify things? Why should developer spend a few minutes to understand what actually happens into, inside of this calculate height uh, function if we can simplify it to that? So do not over-design things if they don't have to be designed such uh, seriously. Yeah, basically design as much as you need. Uh, do not des design for a future which you are not sure that will come. If you think that probably at some point of time we will have uh, dynamic height and we will calculate it, but you don't have it at the moment and you don't need that in the current um, environment, for example, or something like that. So in that simple example, you just shouldn't do that over design. Um, of course, same about uh, over polymorphic. If you have um, inheritance layer of 50 different classes, which uh, basically mm, they they the same. They just empty classes inherited one from each other, and you don't use the polymorphic uh, happiness. Just don't do that. Get rid of them. Um, this is a holy war thing. Um, I'm actually fine with both using tabs or spaces, but please do not use both. How many times you guys have seen this thing in your uh, source tree, in GitHub, GitLab, whatever? It is just, it's stupid. If you um, just see those changes, that's fine. But if you need to solve conflicts in those strings, that's really annoying. So basically, just decide in your project once and forever that everyone in your team uses either spaces or tabs and just set up your IDE so it will just replace tabs to spaces or vice versa. So and, and then you're going to be fine. You're going to be just avoiding those things. Um, a funny thing about comments. Um, how many of you understand this comment. I'm pretty much sure that everyone can understand it. How many of you can understand this comment? Not too many, right? But a little bit less. How many of you can understand this one? Maybe some of you, but I bet that nobody can understand this one. But those comments are completely same. So please use English comments. You have no idea when and where your code will go to a different developers from different countries, from different cultures probably, and uh, this is a, just a good example of what you shouldn't ever do. So version control system. This is a cool thing. I've got my personal story. I joined the company and I just, um, on one of the first days, I asked to provide me with a uh, link to, to the project. And they give me a flash drive and told me just, here you go, there is a project. I said, wait a minute, uh, how many people work in that project? They say, three now, you're a third. I mean, okay, and if I will retrieve it, what are we going to do next? And they told me just open this flash drive. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a few uh, points that you definitely should use, the version control and consider using Git because it's the most popular one and most powerful one. So the real story is the finder in this flash drive looked like this. And basically every time you make a change, you just copy the project and call it with date and time and just pass the flash drive to, to the other developer. That's so easy, right? And it's just three of us, we are in a single room. Why bother ourselves with uh, Git or something really complicated we should think about? So don't ever do that. Always use a con version control system. That's a really handy thing. Even if you are single in a project, just commit things from time to time. It will, you will be able to roll out. But 
I'm pretty sure I don't need to tell you many things about uh, the gits or whatever. So great performance things. I like when people, I mean, when I say I like, I actually hate. I like to make fun of them. Uh, when people try to achieve a great performance with um, really complex things, such as uh, C or C++ classes in um, iPhone application in order to make something work really fast. And basically the point here, if you use high level language, for example, Objective-C or Swift or Java or whatever, just use it, just keep using it, that's fine. If you want to make something really performant in some critical spaces, in some critical places, I mean, use low level API, API at that uh, at that point. But why, why I say that? Because uh, here's the example of code. I, Jesus, that's, 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 that's not an example, I'm sorry. Um, you, do not, you do not write code for a compiler, right? Compiler will understand most of combinations of your architecture or whatever. You write the code mostly for the other developers. So they will understand it later, maintain it, and adjust it uh, when they need them. Uh, so if you write not maintainable code, it's, it's going to be a huge problem in the future. Uh, yeah, basically, that's the second point. Uh, performance win is usually so small that um, you will not even notice that. If that is not critical section. And always measure performance if you did that change. So does that worth that? So yeah, here you go. The example of code, basically, which just signs up to notification from operating systems, such as application did go from background to foreground. And the developer decided that he wants to implement everything himself because uh, he's a guru in C++ and he defined some things. I, basically, I don't really understand how that works. I totally know it works. It works probably a little bit faster than Swift code, which is like this, which is just horribly simple, right? You get notification center, you add an observer with standard method without bridging anything to Objective-C, I mean, to, to C++ from Objective-C or whatever. I mean, just, just compare those things. How do you actually read those sharps? I don't even know why they are there. <laughs> so it is just, do not overcomplicate things because you think they're going to improve your performance. They probably will not. Um, I've been in a project with uh, too many dependencies, and um, they really, really used third-party libraries for every single step. If business came to, if business come to um, developers and said, um, "Okay, guys, we need to add this screen with such buttons and fields in text fields," so it's really easy. And they just go to, they, they went to GitLab, uh, I mean to GitHub, and just search for libraries with buttons which just look like that. And it's not okay. Um, you basically need to use, I mean, we will get to that, but you do not need to use a third party library for every sneeze. So all helpers and uh, all possible extensions which you can write yourself or even avoid with. Uh, uh, standard uh, libraries or um, extensions from provided by by the system. Uh, you just do not need to uh, overcomplicate your system. And basically, it's a bad practice to use UI components in your front end application, whether it's uh, web front end or mobile application, whatever. Uh, because they outdate and new version of browsers and operating system come up and they just break and you do not really want to 
make changes into them, but nobody do that either. So just do not use UI libraries if you can do that. So there is an example of, I don't know if, how many of you are familiar with uh, CocoaPods. It's just a dependency manager in iOS. So basically, in a small project, there was a 118 uh, external dependencies, which is, I would say, horrifying. Because if any of them is outdated and you want to migrate to new version of language or new version of operating system, you basically stuck because you will need to go into it. You will have to check uh, whether you can do something or not or try to avoid to use it. But this is actually uh, additional steps. So it's good practice to just don't use too many of them. But the other uh, interesting point is that, uh, sorry, uh, you still need to use uh, some of them, right? You cannot write all the code yourself. This is actually a serious point as well. Uh, many people try to avoid um, usage of any external dependencies. For example, it's, it's good practice to use them with uh, external services such as Facebook, Crashlytics, whatever, because they know what they're doing, and you, um, you will use this dependency as long as you use their service. If their service aren't required anymore, you can just omit it. So use them for external, and use them for something well tested, such as network storage and testing, definitely. Do not worry about um, testing too much, because um, it's, it's basically uh, just a convenience libraries in most of times. Um, so no, no dependencies at all. It's uh, one more interesting point. When you uh, go to a project and you uh, implement image cache yourself, you implement snapshot tests, which uh, already implemented, of course, and you implement network layer with all those um, request types uh, and, and all these things. Um, so just balance with that. So you still need those libraries because they are well tested. They're used by thousands of applications and systems. And um, it's a good point to consider using them. So yeah, balance between not using them at all and using all of them at the same time. Uh, what about scripts? Um, I've been in a project many times when uh, nothing basically was scripted. So everything has been done manually. So if you need to release something, if you need to uh, create a test version or just update uh, profiles or certificates, everyone just went to, um, I don't know, portal or uh, iTunes Connect in my case and just created everything step by step, every single time, probably every day, maybe weekly, um, basically manually. So just make sure you use scripts for such thing uh, which you don't really want to spend time on, which is build and distribute, test, generated constants, which is a really good thing. Um, I'm sorry. Um, generated constants. It helps you to avoid runtime issues when you can uh, have them at compile time. Uh, we'll get into that into a different point. So color palettes, or I like it as uh, 50 shades of gray. Because sometimes your team has a designer who don't really realize that different colors um, aren't that required in the application. For example, here's a, a Facebook app. And all red arrows point to blue, and green arrows point to any kind of gray. So there's a six green arrows. And in Facebook application, there's only three gray colors and two blue colors. So imagine that your designer just tell you, OK, so here's the mocap and just implement that into the app. And um, 
you just find out that everything is, is a different color. So just try to convince a designer that it will be better for you, to you for everyone basically in this world, everyone will be happier a little bit, uh, if you will use the same blue, the same gray, whatever it's possible. Um, nobody cares about um, if you, like, in a difference in a few uh, values in a, in, a, in a blue, for example. Nobody cares. Nobody even see that. Um, do not use raw values in, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's not really, it not, it not really applies to CSS because you still um, use values, not constants. But from perspective of mobile development, you can use both constants and role values. And um, I really ask everyone to never use role values because if you change something, you will have to go through the entire uh, design layer, all UI layer, and make sure nothing is lost. So if you use constant, definitely you will have to change that in a single place. Um, so this is actually, this point is about uh, designers. Um, and it's about when they just send you a Photoshop file and, says, and say, just extract everything yourself. And here is a single layer in Photoshop. In my personal example, this is a sketch file, not a um, Photoshop file, but whatever. This is just, how can I explore that? I mean, never blend the, the, the layers. Keep layers as a smart objects. And smart objects, yeah, right. Do not rasterize them. And basically, if logic is grouped, it's much more easy, it's much easier to um, hide things and show things and just understand what effects Um, this is this point applies to Objective C very much because this is a really self-documented um, language. Uh, it basically um, broadly thought that uh, Objective C is pretty much as plain English, but it compiles for some reason. So uh, you can write something like that, and it is pretty much normal practice. It takes you a few seconds to even read this function. It calculates size for view located on key window in case of necessity. Animate it. That's, that's cool. Yeah, and you don't need any documentation for that method, right? You don't even need to look into implementation because you already understand everything. But if you will call that calculate size if needed, size if needed. So it's still pretty much understandable. And all you need to do is just to, to total, in order to totally understand it, you will just need to go inside and take a look. But still, it's not just calc method, right? So it should be self-documented, but not too much. Um, yeah, just keep balance, as, as everywhere, keep balance. Um, storing of sensitive data is, is the thing that um, Nobody thinks that it is important until it's, it is stolen or lost. And if you uh, use some kind of configs or save it as a property list or JSON just on a disk or in user preference in case of iOS developments or send it into URL parameter, just don't ever do that because sensitive data called sensitive by for a reason, not, not just because they couldn't find a different word for that. It's important. So use Keychain in case of iOS developments. Uh, encrypt data storage in case of, uh, I mean, any other uh, developments. And always send it in a request body in via HTTPS. It's really important thing, which many people just don't think about because they have never faced um, the problem of sensitive storage loses. Um, this is uh, only about Swift, I guess, and probably about latest version of Java, uh, which also has um, optionals. So 
I don't really know how many of you are familiar with Swift, but you can unwrap uh, optional with uh, force exclamation mark. So uh, the compiler will not um, s tell you anything here because it's totally fine. You are pretty much sure that some view, this some view, has a value into it. And you are confident, and you push that to production, and then different developer come into project and just create one more init method and with some kind of reference. And he or she, I don't know, <laughs> uh, just forgets to initialize that view. And it works fine until some method is called. And um, let me tell you that this method will be basically called on production. You will, um, yeah, of course you can find it in a debug or in, during the testing, but um, it is really common that we just release things and realize that um, they do not work as we expected. They do not work as we tested them. And basically, the, the sum, this sum method will fail, will crash the application. So in order to, uh, to prevent that, uh, the only thing we need to do is uh, to unwrap it safely. And um, in that case, we will throw an error or just log it, and application will be same and will be safe, and we just will be fine. That's, that's the way it is. So use, use optionals. Um, they provide it by, by language, not by an accident. And um, explicit uh, force, uh, I mean not explicit, but force unwrap uh, has this exclamation, exclamation uh, mark as a sign for a reason, because it warns you about something. I don't know if, you, if many of you remember, warnings actually warn you about something. You shouldn't just ignore them. And uh, the exclamation sh mark should well, warn you about uh, the dangers of using this thing. Um, so yeah, basically the, the lesson of this slide is to avoid it. And um, you anyway uh, pay for the power of the language because Swift um, unwraps this value uh, in the same manner, but it will unwrap it and uh, use the value if it is, and if it's not, it's just going to crash. But you can uh, take over um, this responsibility and do not crash the app and just change the logic. So that's, that's what you should use. Um, Imports. All right, yeah, just forgot about, uh, what about this? Um, I don't know how many of you have seen uh, files which uh, contain um, like thousands of imports just because at some point of time compiler uh, complained to you that uh, there is no import for such file. And then the application or the project uh, be becomes something that you just cannot remove a file safely even though if it is not used any longer because it is included and important um, in, I mean, everywhere. So, and the compilation time of such projects uh, dramatically increases because when you change the header which imports everything, you change those imports, and this, this is a like, nuclear war process. So you just, you just have to start at, and just do not import everything. Um, minimize imports, yeah, that, that's the same point. Um, in case of uh, iOS development, there is a pre-compiled header which compiles, first of all, in the app. And if you include something into this header and, ch and then change this file, it will recompile the entire project. So this is, a, this is a, the last point you should import something because it will recompile the entire 
project and you will just lose your time waiting for the, the, the build success. Um, this is also iOS point. Uh, you should definitely use auto layout because you're still able to use a uh, regular coordinate system, but uh, it is impossible to use coordinate system uh, normally with um, a new devices. So if you are provided with something, with some, um, with some system such as auto layout, uh, and encouraged to use it by, by Apple in this, play, uh, in this example, so just do use it. Uh, they will uh, block the coordinate system in a while, in a one or two versions, so just, just use it. Uh, many people do not understand size, size classes in uh, storyboard and layout, so just read a few articles on that and just use them because they are powerful mechanism to use the same layouts on uh, iPhone and iPads on a different versions. Uh, on a different orientations as well. Um, why this point is here is that because some people decide to write code instead of use um, it's instead of using uh, the interface interface builder, and that's I cannot say that this is the worst thing ever, but the more code you have, the more code you have to uh, maintain, but if you will move your um, UI, your, your interface, into the XIB files or storyboards, it will be really helpful for you because you don't have to um, maintain it any longer as a code. You will have to maintain it as a resource, and it's uh, way easier. So do not omit interface builder. When it's whenever it's possible, of course, of course, there are situations when you cannot use them, use it. Uh, but in most cases, you can. Um, this is an example of um, the, the the point of um, using different architecture, which are just popular. For example, Viper here. It's just something really complicated and probably overcomplicated. Uh, it works not for every project, but it is popular at the moment. And if you want to implement it, just think twice before you implement it, because it will increase your code base for like 60%, I guess, because you need different layers such as presenter, interactor, all this kind of thing I don't really remember. So we just think. You better think twice and then think a couple more times because um, it will really overcomplicate your project, your project and especially if that project will be uh, not too big and probably you already see the end of that. Do not introduce Viper and do not introduce any complicated architecture. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, when you enable your expert mode and you just assume that everyone is the same level expert as you are. So basically that's not the case. And the uh, people, um, some of them are beginners, some of them have uh, experience in different areas and they probably do not understand everything what happens in your head. And um, just do not assume that everyone is expert. And the simpler uh, code you write, the easier it will be for people to enter to your project. So um, if you think that I will just create um, a really heavy SQL query because I know how SQL works instead of using in uh, iOS terms core data, which is a great framework for um, work with pers persistent data. And anyone else will have to uh, then change it later on. It will be an issue. Uh, it will be like a showstopper for them because they probably understand SQL, but not as well as you are. And 
just use mainstream technology in, in, in the most of the cases. They mainstream because most people understand them. And right, the simpler, the better. So yeah, simplification is the key. The simpler your code is, the, the, the higher the possibility that you will not be bothered with questions later on. So if you create a system and it is really complicated, you will be asked the question for the rest of your life in, the, in this company, for the rest of your career, OK? And if you write something really simple, so people will be able to understand it themselves. Yeah, that's basically the example I just mentioned. Uh, I don't need core data mode. Uh, this is uh, also kind of expert mode, because I will just use SQL, because I am so much uh, SQL genius. Oh, and, 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 and also, the good point is that I have never tried it, so that's why I don't like it. So if you never tried a popular framework, which is uh, pretty performant, and it's encouraged to use by Apple, um, and that's why you don't like it, there is something wrong with you. So you probably should at least give it a try. Um, this is wrong assume. Not everyone knows SQL. So just keep it in your head. If you know that, that means that th it doesn't mean that everyone else knows it. So the summary of the presentation is that um, that's a really important thing is for me. You always should remember that your, co your code will be uh, read by somebody else. And balance with third-party libraries, um, use up-to-date technology stack. So do not use uh, as direct SQL if you can use a core data. And that's a good point as well. Um, referring to the first one, just read your code before you commit in it, before you commit it. And if it's easy to understand, then it's good. And if you even hardly understand how it works, it's probably the good sign to rewrite it and rethink things. So I don't know if you can share with me some examples. And I didn't mean that your question will be dumb. So if you want to ask something, if you want to add something, that would be cool. If you have examples I can add into this presentation, that would be super cool. Basically, the absence of question means either that everything was understood or nothing was understood. <laughs> but I heard right answer for that, that if statement. So probably everything were, uh, was understood. Does anyone understand the English here? <laughs> probably that's the case. Correct, but interface builder, first of all, it is built what? Oh, for the, for the questions? Okay. I can just repeat the question. If you want to. I, it's just, I, I don't know if going to be a question here. The question was about uh, usage interface builder elsewhere. Um, the point is that interface builder is created for uh, different screen sizes, for different orientations. So um, the auth layout uh, basically confirms with all those, um, all this uh, life situation, call them like that. Um, I agree that uh, most of development is, uh, at the moment, front end development is a web development. So you do not have such instruments there. there. But most of my experience is in iOS, and we have such great tools, such great thing and feature, 
And when people do not use them because they came from web development or Android development or just directly from university, and that, that's frustrating. So no, if you have that point. Actually, I meant that uh, the situation when uh, you... I meant that the situation... Uh, Uh, that that was um, like mm, sorry <laughs> it's, it's not that easy uh, the situation that was happening on the iOS world when when you had only one screen resolution then after that you had two screen resolutions that was uh, specific only for iOS and Apple products so uh, this point about the uh, UI designing, uh, not not uh, using pre predefined coordinates in your code or something like like that, it is not important for any other. I agree. Pro pro probably not 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 important for any other uh, technology. I agree. I agree with that. But uh, once again, uh, Apple developers have this feature, and this is an awesome feature, and then ca they can use it, but they don't, just because they do not understand that, or because they just used to write everything in code. And uh, I really like when you ask a person, why did you write everything in code? Why didn't you use the interface builder for that? Because I can write the code. That's, that's the way it is. That's the answer. But you can write everything inside of main function, right? Everything, without any other functions. You just don't do that, because it's not really convenient. But if, you, if you're used to writing everything in main function, you still could. OK. Uh, can you pass the microphone? First of all, thank you for the wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, my question will be regarding one of the first slides uh, about refactoring. Uh, how often, so far in your career, have you found yourself in a situation where uh, refactoring your code backfired because you uh, did it prematurely? Uh, refactoring for the sake of refactoring, you mean? Uh, let's say, yeah, that, that's basically the thing. Um, basically a couple of times, yeah. I, I can say that I do that on a regular basis or that I never did that. But a few times I just opened some class I wrote, I mean like four or five years back. And I just look into that and think that, oh my god, what a dumb ass wrote that. I'm sorry about that. And I just realized that there's my name in, in the header of this file and this is just uh, too much shame, and I just decided to write things correctly. And basically, uh, when we speak about refactoring, you need to refactor things smartly. You just you, you do not want to refactor things that works well, that work well, and uh, things that um, how do I call that? Um, which is not really. Um, popular, let's say, in your app. Um, for example, you probably do not want to refactor terms and conditions screen every year, right? Because who cares about them? Uh, I mean, it's only for legal reasons there. And s such thing shouldn't be touched, probably, un until they work fine. And if you touch something with uh, changes, then you go into refactoring that. And if you go into refactoring that, uh, just do yourself a favor and refactor that normally without just changing uh, and adding double negations. Mm -hmm. oh, so I guess there is no general rule of thumb uh, regarding that, right? You just, it just comes with experience. Of course, of course. If, that, if, if the world would be a, like a mathematical book, everyone would live in order, but it's not like that. OK, thank you very much. Hey, so you told uh, about writing comments. 
and um, there are some programmers that claim that uh, comments are bad and actually code should be like self-explanatory. The good code is extremely readable. But I guess that comments may be sometimes useful and what's the like middle ground? I would say that, uh, in my personal opinion again, uh, I commend codes only if there is something which is not really clear. If you write the code with uh, like setting up size of some rectangle or whatever, or of some view, you do not need to comment that next line will set up the size of this view because it is pretty much obvious, right? Um, you need to comment things which uh, it is hard to understand why this thing's here. Probably it is kind of hack or uh, operating system version or whatever, or it's some uh, is something that you probably want to remove in the future, or this is just a bug fix, and this is a quick bug fix, and you want to release that. And yeah, that, that's kind of situation when you probably want to command things. So like part of code which is not mm, not directly about the functionality. Yeah, I mean, why not? Why not about functionality? You probably want to command um, public methods in headers. That's a good practice, I guess. We don't really always have time for that, but if you have a few words to describe a little bit uh, wider what this method does, uh, that's probably a good idea. And in, in, I mean, <laughs> in a few years, probably some other developers will thank you for that. So if your method called uh, calculate size for view in a key window, you probably don't want to put the comment there. But if it's not really clear, uh, if not clear why you call something like recalculate or, for example, refresh in specific method, you can comment why you do that in which situation it's required. Because when you uh, dig into a different project, into, into some project you did not write, for example, and you're a newbie in this project, and you try to optimize thing, and you see that there is a, a few refreshes one by one, and you do not understand why, and you just uh, remove one of them, and then realize that three years ago, the, the other developer fixed some bug by adding this extra refresh. So that would be handy to have that comment, right? So yeah, I, thanks. I hope I asked you, uh, answered you.